Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I am back with another video for Neat and Tangled. Today we are going to be using the Friendly Florals and the Merry Kisses, both the stamp sets and the dies. And we're going to be using Zig Clean Color Markers. I know it's been a hot minute since I've used them, um, but we're going to do it today. The whole thing, not a Copic to be seen in this entire video. I know. Um, so I'm starting with the background. So what I have found with these Zig Clean Color Markers is they love the water and they're very, very pigmented. So sometimes it's a little difficult to get shading, which honestly was really what I wanted to practice at. So doing the background, I'm working on Canson watercolor paper and I am starting a line of clean, clear water up at the top. And the reason I turned it, this is actually like the left-hand side is the bottom of the card, but I turned it because I'm right-handed and this gives me a better angle. And then I'm going to take the clean water to the pigment and then let it kind of run up. So the reason I did the darker at the bottom, lighter at the top, is so that it would fade up kind of in this natural gradient. And it's a weird shape right now, I know, but it'll all make sense when the card is done. This is just kind of the visual I had in my head. One of the things with Zig Clean Color Markers that I have noticed is um, it's very difficult to put them on if like the paper is wet, it's hard to get pigment off of them. So one of the tricks that I've learned is just scribbling it on an acrylic block and picking it up with a paintbrush. So here I flicked on some clean water. That's what I was doing while I was yapping about the other things. And um, you can see it's kind of causing some, what I call like blooms um, in the actual watercolor. And then I'm picking up both of the blue. This is the Persian blue and the cobalt blue, um, both of them, and just kind of spattering them into the background um, just to kind of break up that color and make it a little bit more interesting. The focal point's obviously going to be the stamps and dies, which again, I'm stamping on Canson watercolor paper. I like the Montaval one. It's pretty reasonably priced and it works really well for me. I know a lot of people say that they have difficulty blending um, Zig Clean Color Markers and they recommend using um, Bristol Smooth paper, but I tried that and I didn't like it. So Canson's my go-to for watercolors and my go-to for Zigs. So here I'm stamping in just Hero Arts Black Ink. This is waterproof, so I don't have to worry about any bleeding or anything like that. And I'm stamping them far enough apart from each other that I can die cut them when I'm done. So we're gonna, we have story time later. We got, we got 20 minutes together, ladies and gents. Um, but as far as technique goes, this is the way that I found that I like them the best. And this is just what works for me. Um, so I'm putting in a little bit of the lightest color and then adding in my darkest color and then leaving my highlight areas white. Then I'm going in with a number two round brush. I did the background with a number eight. I don't think I said that. But for the detail stuff, I'm using a number two. And then I'm taking the clean water again to the pigment. And then that way it um, kind of blossoms out into the wet areas in a much um, lighter tone. So the gradient is a little bit more subtle, which is what I want. I want a smooth gradation. So for my fox on the left, I decided to make that fox a little brown fox. And can I just tell you that I must really love foxes and flowers together because I think not that long ago, maybe like four or five months ago, I did a different fox and it was actually four neat and tangled. It was a different fox with different flowers. Um, I mean, it was, it's like a completely different card, but like still the same concept. I don't know why I have this so stuck in my brain, but apparently I must just love it. Um, so here I have done the same thing. I've kind of filled in a little bit more because my lightest color isn't going to be a white. Um, it's going to be the lightest version of this. This one's called oatmeal. Um, and then I've added some shading in with a mid brown. Um, later on, I'm going to add some dark brown, but we'll get there when we get there. So here... Um, these carry a lot. So what that means is like when you add water to them, they flow quite a bit, but they also stick to your paintbrush quite a bit or water brush if that's what you're using. Um, so when you're using the, the, like when you dip into the darker color, if you start in the darker color and carry it across the entire thing, then the entire thing is going to be dark color. It just is um, because they just move so much. So it's just knowing your medium and the biggest thing that I can tell you that will help you with blending your Zig Clean Color Markers is water control. I am not using a ton of water here, guys. I'm not, it's not bubbling up on my page. Um, I am, I have a paper towel off to the side next to my water bowl that I'm using to blot when necessary. 
I didn't really love the depth I was getting and like I said one of the things I wanted to practice was shading because typically I would color something with the Zigclean color markers and then I would get super frustrated with the amount of shading that I was getting which was basically like none um, and then I would go over it with my Copics. <laughs> so I really wanted to kind of force myself to just stick to one medium. Um, and if you're watching my channel, I'll have another video um, later on that is a similar concept. Um, but here, so I'm just adding more of that mid-tone brown, trying to darken that up. And it still wasn't getting quite as dark as I wanted it to. So I'm going to let it dry again and move on to the next thing which you want to make sure that this is just like any watercolors. Like if you're working in two areas that are next to each other, they're going to bleed into each other if they're both wet. But because I'm using such a minimal amount of water, I don't really have to worry too much about it. They're drying almost instantaneously. Um, so for the fox on the right, uh, I am doing a little bit of white on uh, her face, her chest, and her tip of her tail. And then things are going to get scary for a minute. But trust me, so I'm coloring her orange, like orange, orange, bright orange. Um, but we're going to tone it down with the shading. So at the end of the day, she's still going to be super cute and not look crazy bright orange. Um, because we're shading, what is this? I think it's like a art, is it an art brown? Something like that. I have listed all of the colors um, individually on the blog. They're also listed below if you're watching on YouTube. Um so you should be able to to go in there and and find it. I have the 36 set, um, but I have supplemented with uh, some extra purchases um, because there wasn't like a good, there's a carmine in there, which really waters out to basically a pink. And so I didn't really have a good color to shade that with. Um, reds are really hard for this particular medium. Uh, getting like a true red because they all water out to pink, it seems like. Uh, speaking of pink, I am using um, a very light shade of that to fill in their ears while I waited for their her body to dry so I could go in and do her tail. I didn't want the shading to bleed into the highlight of her tail, which is the top portion of it. And I just really love like, you know, it gives that pretty watercolor texture um, and it's just something different. And especially for me, one of the things I did struggle with though, and this is just watercoloring in general, like a stamped image. Here's where I'm going back with that really dark brown um, to try to really get some good shading. So I'm using a very minimal amount of water to just kind of wet that area so that I can blend it um, out and not have a super harsh line. But I liked that much, much better. Um, but anyway, back to what I was talking about before. Um, one of the things that I struggle with in like coloring in a stamped image as far as like a black outline stamped image is making sure that I take my watercolor all the way to the edges because I get so paranoid about going out of the lines that sometimes I end up with these weird white spots that I have to go back in and fix. So for the scarf, I am shading it with white stripes and then purple stripes. So I'm putting shading, the scarf that's tying them together, which I think is adorable, um, is shading toward the bottom of it uh, except for where it's tied together that's pretty much all a darker gray and then for the one the pieces parts that are hanging down um, I added shading to uh, the left and right for the one that's in the forefront and then just the left hand side for the one that's in the back then I'm going to move on to purple it's going to look ugly you're going to be like Kelly why did you pick purple um, to go with this brown and orange fox uh, but trust me, by the time the card all comes together, it'll make sense and it won't look hideous. Promises, promises. So, card card time. Story time. So this is one of the stories that I didn't tell you for a while because it's kind of keeping it to myself that um, I was out there in the world of dating again. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, my car battery died. Just, just totally kaput. And thankfully, I was in my driveway. So I didn't have to have it towed anywhere or anything like that. Um, but Eric was here and he was like, I'll just, I'll just jump start it. It won't be a big deal. And I was like, oh, are you sure? And he was like, yeah, like totally know what I'm doing. And I was like, okie doke. Um, and I'm scared of big vehicles. Like, let's just, I'll just straight up be honest with you. Like, I don't like trucks. I don't like SUVs. Ford apparently in 2020 is going to stop making any sort of smaller cars, which basically breaks my heart because I come from a Ford family and, um, I'm not buying an SUV. It's just not happening. They make me very uncomfortable. So anyway, he's trying to hook them up and I have to, 
my car is parked too close to the garage. Um, so he's like, you're, we're going to have to move it. So I like pop it in neutral and he literally pushes my car back down the driveway, um, far enough that we can get his truck in front of it. Um, so that I can, or he can't, I didn't do any, I literally did nothing. I don't even know why I said that. So he can, um, get my car started, jump, jump my battery. So he scoots truck up. We aren't close enough. He's like, you're going to have to do it so I can see. Don't worry. I'll tell you when to stop, blah, 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 blah. And I'm super paranoid and it takes like a hundred years for me to even get up close enough to it. And then when I do, I get out of the car and I realize like literally our bumpers are touching because the cables are so short. Stand by. Talk about the card. So here I had some bleeding of my shading underneath my little bird wing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a dry brush and then I'm going to like scoop some of the pigment away. So if you go in with a, um, a dry, um, not like completely dry, but um, like a very lightly damp brush. So if you're brush has less moisture on it than your paper, you'll pick up pigment. And so that's how I managed to do it right along that same line. Moving on to the flower. Um, here you can see some of the shading that I'm adding. This is another thing that I wanted to practice, which is honestly why I picked the fox and the flowers, because I wanted to be able to practice both of them, um, like animals and flowers. Um, so I'm adding wine red, which kind of looks very ugly, um, added into this light pink, but don't worry, they're going to blend beautifully together by the time we're done. But you can see I added like those little arrow pieces parts at the edges. Um, those are going to be the actual shaded parts and it looks a little bit crazy when you start, um, especially before you've added any water. But once you start to add the water, you'll see that it'll blend out and it'll still give you a little bit of shading. After this is dry, I'm going to go back in and add a little bit more shading around the areas um, that are drawn in, like those little half commas that you see, um, so that they will look um, like they are kind of curling over. I'm going to add a little bit more, more shading there once it's dry. Watercolors are just, you have to build them up and um, that's why I struggle with them because I'm super impatient. <laughs> I mean, that's just the reality of the situation. So anyway, I get out of the truck. I realize that our bumpers are actually touching, like they're kissing each other. Um, and it is what it is because the cable is so short. So I get in the car. We're able to jumpstart my car. I'm very, very grateful. But then I was like, listen, I have to get peanut from school. So this thing's going to have to run for the next 30 minutes. Like it is what it is because um, I cannot leave. I won't be able to go to AutoZone and back in time. Um to get him from school. And he's like, I'll just take it. Like you'll have my truck here in case there's an emergency and you need to go somewhere. Um, I'll, I'll just take it up to AutoZone. And I was like, I don't want you to put yourself out. And he was like, nope, no big deal. And I was like, okay, you're awesome. Like boyfriend of the year award to you. And um, so he takes my car to AutoZone. Then I don't hear anything. I get peanut from school. I don't hear anything. Um, it was that particular day, it was a day that he went to his dad's house. So he um, gets picked up. I still don't hear anything. And so finally, I get a text message that says, hey, I'm just going to run home to my place. Um, and then when I'm done doing my things, like I'll bring your car back out to you. And I wasn't going anywhere. So I was like, okay, yeah, that's fine. So here you can see where I like kind of added the shading um, so that it, they looked like a little bit more popped up. And then I'm just going to add shading to the base of these flowers for both the pink and the purple ones and then do the same thing I've been doing, uh, clean water at the edges and then down to the darkest color. Um, so anywho, so I like don't hear anything from him and it's been like a couple of hours and I was like, are you, are you coming back? Like you didn't like I, my car is not that great. I'm sure you didn't just like nab my car. Like, but seriously, are you coming back? So he gets here and he was like, listen, here's the deal. Uh, your windshield wipers don't work. And I'm like, I'm come again. The windshield wipers were fine when, when it left. And he was like, yeah. So when they, he went to AutoZone, apparently like they'll change out your battery for free. I, after my experience, I would not, re would not recommend zero stars would not recommend. Um, so I guess when he took, however he took it off, you're supposed to take the negative off before the positive or the positive before the negative or some whatever it is, whatever order it's supposed to be in. Kid didn't do that. He did it the opposite way. And then when he did it, he broke off the post of the old battery, like in the connector, and then they had to like fish it out or something. I'm totally ignorant when it comes to cars. I don't know. This is all just third-hand knowledge. Um, 
and then the windshield wipers like went on like crazy full blast and then uh died like just abruptly died and they didn't work like that that was just it they just didn't work and so he very sweetly was like, oh my gosh, I like I took her car to go fix it. And then I broke it even more. Like, so all of the time that he was gone and why he went back to his place instead of like coming back over was to try and fix it. He called like every mechanic he knew was on Google and YouTube. And it was very, very sweet trying to fix my car, but could not. So thankfully, I'm very blessed that my parents have two vehicles and I was able to borrow one of their cars and I just left my car parked in the garage because when I called um, the dealership, they were like, yeah, we can't get it in. And it was like three or four days and it was supposed to snow and I didn't have any windshield wipers to clean it off and that whole deal. Um, so I left it parked in the garage and then I drove my parents car out there because Eric refused to let me drive my own in case for some reason I would need my windshield wipers. Um, he didn't want me to be driving it, which was very sweet and very kind. Um, so on the way out there, the windshield wipers start working. Like on the way to the dealership to get them fixed, the windshield wipers start working. And I get out there and I was like, dude, like I still brought it in. The windshield wipers are working, but like clearly there's something wrong with it. And he was like, the mechanic guy was like, nope, it probably just needed to reset itself. I was like, what? Say what? He was like, yeah, probably just needed to like the, you know, the technology portion of it, the little computer inside just needed to, to reset itself. And I was like, um, are you sure? And he's like, yep. Yeah. No reason for us to see it. No reason for you to pay any money. Like just take it on home. So he was right. Like I haven't, I'm knocking on wood right now. Um, I haven't had any issues with my windshield wipers since then. Um, but just like what a bizarre thing, right? Like that just, that just happened. It just killed them. And, and poor Eric was so terrified that he ruined my car. Um, it was, it was really very cute. But anyway, so that was my car battery dying story. Um, so back to this, uh, we're onto the leaves now and I used a couple of different greens because I wanted there to be some differentiation between them. You know me, I'm always trying to make it a little more interesting um, as far as design elements go. And so for the first one, I used a light green and then I shaded it with just green, the regular color green. And then for this other one, you're going to see me do here and the other little ones. I'm only going to show you this one because I did them all the same. Um, I used a May green and then I added some of that co I think it's the cobalt blue um, and then shaded that with the Persian blue because I wanted it to be like a teal color and there isn't a dark teal color in my set um, but thankfully I can mix the colors to make it do what I want it to do. So I did all of the other leaves the same way you just saw me do that one um, large one. Then I let it all dry because you have to. I mean, you just do. This is the patience part that I'm, I'm very port. Again, with the port. Why? It's like I want to be in a boat, but I don't because I get motion sickness. Anyway, I outlined all of my images because I like a bold black outline and especially stamping on watercolor paper. That seems to be something that is a little bit of a struggle. And um, then I went in with a white gel pen um, and just added a couple of little details. So I added um, little highlights on the bird wings and like some dots uh, along the main flower and then the little um, like ones that were cupped. I added a couple of little dots just, you know, because it's cute basically. And then I'm going to put all my dies in place and I'm going to run that through my Big Shot off camera because it is far too large for me to try to get on top of my desk. And then I realized that my background was very much off center. Very, very much off center. So in order to make it centered, I'm just going to go ahead and trim off a quarter of an inch on the right hand side and the top. And now it really looks weird. It almost looks like a ocean, like a bowl of the ocean or like a fish bowl or something. But once I start building up the pieces parts for it, um, it will make sense how that background looks. So this, I'm just kind of laying these all out here in place so I can see where I want them to be. So I can see where I want the sentiment. So the sentiment is actually from the typed sentiments. I was originally going to use the I love your face one that is in the, um, which one is it? The, the friendly florals, but it was just too big. And um, I still wanted it to be like a encouragement card because that's what my making it for. I have a specific friend in mind if I can ever get myself to the post office. And so the sentiment says, you are loved, um, which I thought was really cute. And it's got like that little perfect little typed font uh, and doesn't really distract away from the focal point, but still gets the message across. 
As you saw me there, I put some foam tape behind the flower. I did not peel off the release paper. Um, and actually, I bought this at my local craft store because I still have not purchased my scotch foam tape. And um, I'm not going to go into like bad mouthing products or whatever, but it wasn't good. And I didn't really love it. Um, the release paper was terribly hard to get off. I do like that it's a little bit thicker than the scotch um, foam stuff. But anyway, um, yeah, I just probably won't be buying that one again. And in the products, I'm linking to the scotch because I would much rather have you purchase that. Um, it's it's just preferred. It's my preferred. Um, so here I'm using the Tombow Mono Multi Glue to adhere a lot of them down. Um, just so that there's like three layers. So there's the card base and then there's the one layer of die cut that's glued down and then the large flower is popped up as well as the um, the little teeny tiny bird, which is also from the Merry Kisses set. And I know it's a Christmas set and I don't care because I think that it's important to get more use out of your things. And if you live in Ohio in spring, you need a scarf. That's the reality. We're actually still in winter. I'm totally fine with the scarf situation. I'm still wearing scarves for goodness sake. Um, and then I moved this little sprig somehow. I guess I didn't really push it down. Um, so I just tucked that back in behind my little birdie. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is put on, um, well, I'm going to adhere this to a card base because it got a little wonky with all that water in the background. Um, and it is a little bit smaller than an A2 size card since I had to trim it to make it um, even. So I'm just going to put that on a Nina 80 pound um, white card base. And then um, I am going to add some clear Wink of Stella. And the reason that I want to point this out is because it will reactivate your zig markers. Now, for me, it never really affects anything too, too much. But just so you know, when you're doing different colors, you might need to scribble it off a little bit so you aren't transferring uh, one color to another color. So that's it. That's the whole card. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.